Hi. <clears throat> it's me, Payan. Hi, Fishy. As always. Uh, I found new music. That's good. Um, it's a tad loud. I think. Well, actually, it should be fine. Tell me if it's fine on a stream. Um, so I'm using an app called Pretzel, or web app rather. Oh, I'm gonna show you real quick. It's Pretzel. Um, they they make uh, copyright free music for, or they provide copyright free music for streamers and YouTube videos and stuff. So that's cool. Um, but mostly for streamers, I think. Well, I guess you can use them for videos as well. And they're free. Um, the only thing they require is that the that they have a Twitch chatbot that is announcing and linking to the songs being played, which is fair game. Um, like, I don't want to put in attribution to anything or whatever to my to my descriptions and whatnot because I don't want to be bothered by it. Like, that's it's not because I don't want to attribute; it's because I I don't want to be be bothered with it. Um, as long as it's uh, automated like this. I'm okay with this. <laughs> uh, sure. Attribute uh, attribute the 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 um the attribute the creator. That's good. Why is it why is Restream telling me that Twitch is not connected? Should be. Should be, surely. Looks good. I know, I think the... I would say the Twitch chat is not connected, but I saw the Twitch message, so... Um, hmm. Doesn't seem like they have anything um, like the Twitch bot for YouTube, so I guess YouTube chat is gonna... Well, it's not gonna be free of it, because the Restream bot is gonna duplicate it over, but... <laughs> that's that. Um, so, yeah. Um, I'm actually pretty close. To finishing up the groundwork, I did a little bit of extra work off stream while I was sitting in the car earlier today. I um, have to pull the changes really quick though. No, that's push. Always get the hotkeys mixed up. Pull! There we go. So yeah, we were actually pretty close to getting the, the groundwork f done, which is uh, cool. Um, we reset master really quick because I pushed a, I pushed a um, work in progress commit there earlier. So um, what I did is um, I implemented or not implement well kind of implemented. Uh, I added um, the the resolve method to dependency and called it in the factory, which is not really what I want to do. But I this is basically the first step. The music is too loud for my ears uh can't get it much i think this is on minimum already uh mm. Mm. wonder if i should get the i don't want to reduce browser volume because that's gonna mess up with other things so i'm gonna download the desktop app really quick should be able to make that a little quieter there's a little it's a little bit heavy for my taste Skip that song. Murkloff sound. They make good music. So let me get that fixed really quick. Should have set that up earlier. I'm sorry. I wanted to start the stream. No. Oh. He does no, this is not on stream, okay. Give me a second. Gonna be back in a second. There we go. Let's...
Bra. Okej. Okay. That works. Perfekt. That works. I think the volumes are already better than it was. Well, I guess it's the same volume we should... Let's reduce that a little bit. There we go, and we're good. Okay, cool. Um, so, yeah. Why is it showing the volume mix on stream? <laughs> That's dumb. So yeah, um, as I said, I want to get the groundwork done. Uh, I think we're pretty close. So as I said, I added the resolve method to dependency and called it in the factory and again, generate next step method. Uh, that's not actually, not actually useful yet though. Uh, and it's probably, like I wrote a test that makes sure that all of the dependency resolve methods are being called. Is it this one? Ooh. No. Oh, that's the create fakes method. Never mind. Let's see how. But there we go. Um, here it is. Um, no. There. There. Resolve must have been uh, must have happened once exactly. Calls to resolve, uh, which is probably not going to be true if I actually implement it, because um, in or like I, I don't need to call resolve on all the dependencies probably. So let let, let me refresh you really quick. So the idea is, uh, I create all the actions, then I create like the actions are what is happening in the factory, then I create all the dependencies, which is um, what dependencies are exist so that an action can happen. And then I resolve all the dependencies and then I trigger all the actions that um, have good dependencies. Uh, well, they're, well, which depend, well, trigger all the actions which have no blocking dependencies. Let's put it that way. So um, what I'm, that means is that as soon as I find a dependency that is blocking one of the actions, I don't have to resolve the other ones on that action, which means I don't have to um, resolve all the actions, uh, all the dependencies. So this is this test is gonna be replaced um, soon, but um, let's first do the other thing. Um, so I started with yeah with with adding another action to the uh, another method to the action interface because the action obviously has to create its dependencies but it also has to activate because if the action is not activating it's not doing anything and i thought about it and i think the the original design i had like last week or whenever where i gave um like an activate method to the structure um is still valid i give it a factory it modifies the factory and returns the modified factory um, well, it's not really modifying the factory because immutable, so it's going to create a modified copy of the factory and res returning that. And that still makes sense. I was, um, like, originally, or not originally, but after I thought about the original design, I thought that I that that's not actually a valid approach because I have to um, check which actions to do and then do all the actions at the same time and whatnot. But I think with the solution I have now, with, like, the dependencies all being cleared before I do anything, um, I think this is actually the correct design because I can clear all the dependencies and when all dependencies are cleared I know exactly which actions will happen and then I can just activate all of them in any order because they're all gonna happen. Well, I guess maybe not any order depending on how I implement it because some de some actions might depend on others and then they have to obviously happen before the other one if I'm having hard limits there in the, in the execution. Um, we're gonna see about that um, when it comes up. But for now, this seems to be a valid design. So, um, so the next step is now to make sure that all actions that have no blocking dependencies um, get activated. So I'm gonna write a test for that, and then we're gonna imp um, then we're gonna um, 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 extend the generate next step method in the factory to actually make that happen. So. Uh, I want to re rename this test basically because actually, you know what? We're gonna remove these line, this line because it's not gonna be true anyway in the end. And I'm just gonna keep the name and make it. No, I'm, I'm just gonna no. I'm just gonna rename. Wait, let's keep it in. I'm gonna rename it to something basic like um, generate next step generate no uh, generate next step. Uh, Um, completes basic behavior or executes basic behavior. 
So I have two empty checks up here, and then I'm gonna have a, a simple check down here. That's gonna, or not a simple check, but a, a basic check that's gonna check the general uh, behavior. Maybe I should probably call it general, general behavior. Yeah. Which is all the actions have to be generated, all the dependencies have to be generated, and then um, this line is gonna be dropped eventually. Actually, let's drop it now. Like it's there's there's no point for this. Not all the, not all dependencies have to be resolved, um, but instead. All actions have to be activated that have no blocking dependencies. So I'm gonna write that um, in a way that I, yeah, I'm gonna check that. So for basically, hmm, I have to set up my my dummy so a little more clever, I think, because because I have to um, know which dependencies belong to which actions, basically, so I can actually test for it. So I should probably change that. That's a lot of generating. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> the music a little quieter still. It's not going Is it showing that window? What What do you think that window is? OBS, what do you think that is? Can you tell me? Can you tell me what do you think that is? He thinks that's tortoise git. That's... That's not. No, no, no. Wait, I have to open my tortoise git window. Poverty. What I skid. Okay. Yeah, that's better. No, it's not showing the volume mixer anymore. Good. Okay, cool. Um so yeah, I have to set this up a little bit more clever. So maybe um I probably want to know. I probably want I probably want to have like a a collection um, of items that have actions that have dependencies. So it's basically a dictionary of dictionaries of dependencies. So let's just change the return type of this. Still gonna do a tuple because it's gonna be a factory. And then an i dictionary of item being the key and a dictionary of action to actually not a dictionary but a lookup which is basically um dictionary of list you could say um, let's just, uh, da -da. there we go. So a lookup is basically, um, you have a key and an, and an element uh, type, and the key type is, like it's acting like a dictionary, but with the values always being a list. So yeah, now the music is a little too quiet actually. Good evening, Nirem. Nirem? I'm not sure how to pronounce your name actually. Nirem? Nyrum? I don't know. This song is quieter than the other where, other where I think. A little bit annoying. Okay, so I have to now change the return thing. Um, uh, how do I do this? What's the easiest way of doing this? Yeah. Uh, so I changed the generate fake or the create fakes code, by the way, um, as well a little bit. Probably have to change it even further. Well, now I have to change it to match the new new return value or return return type rather. 
Um, so I want to have a lookup of action to dependent. So I'm creating dependencies and I'm creating the actions based on the dependencies. And now I should be able to somehow... What is a lookup? Is that like... How, how does lookup work? Um, that's not actually what I want, but I should find as well. Is that like an innumerable of something? Innumerable of I grouping. Can I create group element, group thingies? Out of thin air? I mean, I could instead just return, just return the a tuple of action and dependencies and then select them into a lookup. You know what? Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, I think. So I'm gonna do action and the returned dependencies. And now I have to do two lookup. That's surely a method, right? Yeah. With the key function, key selector and a value selector. So tuple to action and tuple to turn dependency. So now actions should be a lookup of I action to list dependency. Yeah, that's, no, that's not good actually. Why to list dependency? What is that method overload? That's, uh, oh, it's not key select, a value selector, it's comparer. Uh, that sucks. Um, what are the other overloads? There's one for element selector. Yeah, why is it not using that one? I action to list, I should be that one. Let's try a name parameter. Still a lookup of list I dependency. What? That's weird. That's sure surely is weird. Not what I'm expecting. Okay, Nurem doesn't know how to pronounce him, his name himself, so uh, I'm just gonna go with Nurem then. Uh, this is really weird. Okay, I'm, I'm apparently misunderstanding this method. Um, let's see. So I'm calling which I'm which one am I calling? I'm calling the one with. Oh, it's easier to see here actually. Parameter source. No, type parameters, parameter source, key selector, element selector. So I'm calling this one. Transform function produ produce a result element value from each element. Oh yeah, it's a functor t element. Ha, huh? how is that supposed to? Uh, I'm misunderstanding how this works. Defines an indexer size property and boolean search method for a data structure that maps keys to inruble t sequences of values. Am I misunderstanding the lookup? I always thought that's what it's supposed to be. And that's the example, look. P convert to char, P company, blah, blah, blah. Wait, how is this different to a dictionary? Sharp, C sharp, lookup versus dictionary. A 
The key down has to be unique. So you can have multiple entries with the same key, yeah. Uh, so I need basically, oh, okay, so if I want to use the to lookup method, I have to return it in it. I have to go through all the dependencies basically. Uh, that's annoying. Um, okay, we do it differently then. Just gonna do. I mean, I can go to dictionary and then to lookup, but I can just do do to uh, dictionary and do I enumerable dependency here if that's how you want this to go down then this is how it's gonna go down fine fine I guess I could go to immutable dictionary doesn't really matter let's just go with two dictionary it doesn't matter if it's mutable or not I don't want to blow up this um, type definition any further. So yeah, okay. So two dictionary. Now we need to change these a little bit to action keys. Oh, I can't freaking hell. My code doesn't work anymore now because actions is not a list anymore. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna have to do this in two steps. Um, and I'm gonna rename this to Action Dict, and then I'm gonna save the actions in a new variable called Actions, which is Action Dict. Ah, Action Dict to uh, keys. To list now this code should work again and now we do the same trick here we did up there we make the return value of this thing a, a tuple and then call to dictionary And then we can return this, I think. Why not? It's a dictionary of item list I action. Dictionary of item. Wait, what? Oh. Oh, oh god damn it. Uh why is it so hard to generate the data structure? I'm <sighs> Yeah, this is not how it goes. Um We do it different. Okay. We name this back to actions again. Get rid of this. And then we just do actions keys to list that's not gonna work either so th what I'm doing here and why this is not working is um, um, so previous actions was a list and what I did is basically I, I took like I went to approach like okay the, the issues here I need 80 I wanted to generate eight dependencies then generate four actions that each take two of these dependencies and then generate two items that take two of the actions and do it like in a generic way so that I can just ramp up the number of dependencies to change the number of, of actions and items. So I basically use code here. Um, basically, if you look at look at it here, um, I generate a range from zero to half of the amount of dependencies. So four in this case, because eight dependencies. So this is four. So a range from zero to four. Well, zero to three, I guess. Um, four, like a four element range. So 
bench takes a start and count as parameters. So one, 0, 1, 2 and 3 and then I generate over those and um, basically generate an action and take the first, uh, take the first and the second and then the third and the fourth and so on, it depends on, depending on which iteration I'm on. Um, th that breaks if I can't use get range anymore, which I can't because a dictionary is not a range. Um, what, what is the keys thing? Is keys... What is keys? It's a key collection. Is a key collection an I list or an I collection? Apparently not. So I could I could do this, but I, I don't think that's a good idea. Okay, I don't like that song. <laughs> Hello, Samuel Norman. So I have to find a good way of, of doing this. Uh, without making the code unbearable. Um, so this is not going to work, right? Because this is generating... Well, is it... Is it generating the same list every time? Because if so, I'm fine with that. I mean, it's not guaranteed to do that, surely. But it's probably gonna do it anyway. Why would it change how it generates this list? So it's probably gonna basically create the same list every time. This is not gonna help though, because those are just actions and I need the dictionary of actions. So this is not actually helpful. Okay, we have to do the two. Yeah, okay, we, we, we do it differently. Um chup 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 So I just have to change the generation of this dictionary. Instead of going through returned actions, I have to take all these returned actions and select them and make a uh Wait, this is wrong anyway, right? This is okay. Now wait. I started wrong. That's why I'm getting in trouble here. I'm started wrong. Um, I don't need one action sticked. I need multiple dictionaries of actions because I need one for every item. So um, this is wrong already. Um, so how do I salvage this? Um, if I create, like, if I basically have to go through all the dependencies, then create, oh, god damn it, I made, I'm making myself, I'm making, <laughs> I make this so hard for myself, I could probably do this in a way more straightforward way, but I want to do it in a, in a fun and cool way, and making incredible stupid code, I could just write this down, copy paste, and all would be good, but no, I have to do it the hard way, because I'm me. Um, this is probably hard to follow for the viewers, <laughs> so I'm sorry for that. It's just my brain doing some extra loops. That's a cool song. At least I have decent music now, so that's good. The bot is fairly spammy though. Well, I mean, for every song, I guess, so. That's fine, though, I think. Okay, let's start that again. I want a dictionary of items, and for every item, I want another dictionary of actions, and every action should have an enumerable of dependencies. Alternatively, these could be lookups. Or at least this one could be a lookup. Surely they could maybe both be a lookup. It could probably both be a lookup. <laughs> Fishy says it was hard to follow since the first stream for me. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why are you still here then? Just to listen to my voice, I guess. That's fine, obviously, but... 
It's not quite what I was going for with this stream. <laughs> That's fair. Okay, brain, work, please. You can go to bed in an hour or so. So I create eight dependencies. Now I want to group them. Maybe I should use the grouping method. Can grouping do it like arbitrary based on numbers somehow? Let's see. Dependencies. Can't type. To group. Uh, group by is the method. Key selector. Oops. It's not really gonna work. Because I don't have a key. I mean, what I could do is I could make them a list of tuples with the index and then group them by that or something. This is so dumb though. So for Is lookup implementing i list? Or i collection rather? No, just i enrollable. So I can't call get range on that either. Okay, I think I should actually do it with an index on a dependencies. So I'm just gonna change the select here to be a tuple or yeah, a tuple of the index divided by two And the, the dependency itself. So now it's probably a. Oh, it's still an int. Okay, that works. So this should be like what's the? I'm gonna want make. I want to make this. Um, I want to make this. What's to? I want to make this more um, verbose. Um, well, actually, it should be fine. So this is always rounding down. So zero and one will both be zero. Two and three will both be two, uh, both be one, and so on. So this is fine. Be written like that. Can I think this is better though. Um, and now I can do it a little different than this. And just go through dependence. And now I have to group them. I probably should group them here already. Really. Maybe. And make them a, a lookup. To lookup. So now dependencies is a lookup from int to int dependency. We have to change that. So now dependencies is a lookup from int to i dependency. That's good. That's what I want. That's what I want. Now I can go through these. Um, we're just going through all the dependencies. No, that's actually not useful. Should probably do a group by now. Now it's an item will I grouping int I dependency. That's better. That's better. So every element I get here is an I grouping now. 
And I can just say... I... Uh... How do you how do you get the thing? Oh, you get just get them by using I. So this is a no. This is a grouping now. It's not what I want. Well, kinda. Now it should be a list. A list of I dependency. There we go. So for every grouping. I create an action, put the dependencies in a list, put them in the return for the fake method, for the fake method call, and then return them together, put them in a dictionary, and now I have to repeat the same step though, so I should probably put another number here where do I get a number though I mean I can just take key right yeah and now we do group by now we don't group by what do we do now Um, what do I want? So dependencies is an enumerable of groupings from into dependency now. Action stick is a dictionary of actions to list I dependency. That's actually good. That's actually good because this is exactly what we want here. I mean I enumerable instead of list, but that doesn't really matter. That's exactly what I need. So this is good, but now I'm gonna have a hard time putting that in items I think um, I mean maybe n <laughs> I mean what I can do is so every action has an. Yeah, what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete, uh, div, 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 um, divide by two again here, and then we're gonna take that to group again. I think I think that's working. Group by t item one, and the value will be to dictionary. Uh, guess item. Action. Uh, how do I know? Turn dependency. No, this is not working. Is that is this working? Wait, what is return dependencies? That's a list. I need it. Is this just wrong? Maybe maybe my setup is wrong. Am I dumb? I need a dictionary of items. For every item, I want to get a list of actions. And a list of actions, for every action I want a list of dependencies. No, this is this is the correct setup. I'm I'm my mind is melting right now though. So I'm not getting what I want. Um, I group so basically what I want is a grouping with an index and then I dictionary action. Yeah. So how do I do this? Why? Right, stop the music really quick. What am I doing? My, my brain is just melting. Um, there's someone with the Russian nickname asking uh, what I want to do. Well, I'm, I'm creating, trying to create a game. Well, I'm, right now I'm writing a test and I'm failing. I'm writing mock mock um, uh, mock objects for a test rather and I'm failing because I'm doing it way too complicated <laughs> um so again I want this dictionary of action of a of dependencies 
So I only have one action here though. I need them all to be in a dictionary. Oh wait, I, I think I think I might have an idea. I think I have to do it in two steps. So now I have to group by, which is now, yeah, grouping of a tuple. Oh yeah, I can't do it in, no, this is not gonna work, okay. This is not gonna work because I can't have, can't have the action and the key being the key in the in the dictionary, basically. Um, oh God, brain, brain, start working. Okay, what do I need? What do I want to do? I want to call. I want to. I want an enumerable in some way that I can go through, similar to how I do it here. So what do I have here? I have here an enumerable of groupings. Why can I, why am I too stupid to do this? What am I missing here? Oh, I think I, I know what I'm missing. I have to group by action and then create a new thing. To group by action and then return the, the index. Followed by No, I can't do it. I, my brain is just <laughs> Why is my brain not working right now? I should probably do like a, a diagram or something. Um I'm not sure how to write this down though. Um So I have a, no, I'm not going to be able to visualize this, I think. <laughs> what I want is an I grouping with the key being a number and the value being a dictionary. So the number zero should have a dictionary of Ah, that's the issue. Now I got it. Okay, I don't need a dictionary. I need a key value pair. And that's the error I'm doing here. Um, this has to be an, a, a key value pair. And then we're good. New key value pair. I think, I think that solves it. I think this is good now. Why is this failing? Cannot, uh, wait, there is a... How do you create key value pairs again? Is it not this way? Do they have like a create method or something? Thought you just create them, but maybe not. Create, there we go. There we go. And now, because I don't want a grouping of dictionaries, I want a grouping of key value pairs. So now actions is an enumerable of groupings of action to key value pair. Is that correct? Oh, no, 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 now I have to, um, obviously I have to group by the key. I have to group by the key. So now it is an enumerable of I groupings with an int as a key and then a key value pair with one action and a bunch of dependencies. And now, and now I can do the same trick I did 
up there here and go with all the actions select them should probably not name this i should rather name this a uh no d and this a and do a to list here and then in the end call what's your issue now what, what did just break that is the wrong value type this is a key value pair of action of list this is Right, what is what is A now? A is an I grouping key value pair. So I just have to transform them to the to the value. Uh, pair value to list. And now return action should be is a list of list of dependencies. It's a bit too much. Damn it. Probably that was not correct. That was probably not. Okay, my brain is still making dumb mistakes, apparently. So this is still the wrong type because this now is a list of list of dependency. Do I have to do select many? Probably. Not helping. Is this correct now is the important question. Because <laughs> this is, the type is correct now, but is no, it's not. It's a list of I dependency. What is your issue now? It should return I rule of actions. Oh, yeah. Actions, not dependencies. There we go. That's better. Okay. Okay, okay. I think we're doing good now. So, A is an I grouping of int to key value pair action list dependency. So, if I select the key, I get the action. So now I have all the actions that are, that are in the in the same grouping, so that I have the same index. They don't have the same index yet. I have to divide by two here. I think. Now the line gets a little long. Let's split that up. This is a dictionary with the key being an item and the value being a list of actions now. No, this is not correct. This is not correct. Because we must not return the actions here, but rather the pair. So A. A. Well, ACI grouping, how do I get the pair? A to list, yeah. Now, item two is, item two is, uh, what is, what is this now? This is a dictionary of I item two list key value pair I act oh shit. <laughs> um not to list. I have to do to dictionary now. And then we should be good, I think. Oh god, this is This is way too complicated. There's probably a way easier way to do this.
I'm just messing it up right now. Maybe I shouldn't do it this way, but I want to do it this way. That's probably going to be hard to use later on, though, isn't it? No, actually not. If I get it this way, it's going to be really easy to use. That's why I want it in that way, because then I can just go through them, say, yeah, give me all the keys, all the items, and then going through the, getting all the actions by, yeah. Is there a better way to do this? Getting annoyed with myself here. Okay, what? Okay, let's let's come from the other side again. If I want, so what I want now is an is a. I think this might actually be the correct approach here, but the method's not. Can't do that. What happens if I just do this? What do I get? Yeah, I think I got it. I think it's actually correct. Dictionary of I item. Like dictionary with the key being I item and the value being a dictionary with the key being an action and the value being a list of I dependencies. Now that's exactly what I can return in the end. Or I can't for some reason. Cannot implicitly cannot implicitly convert type dictionary item blah blah to dictionary item dictionary. Is it a, like a coercion problem here somewhere? Do I have to go for a list here? Let's get rid of the interfaces. Yeah, okay, it's a coercion problem. Fine. And if I would go immutable to bin the dictionary, it might work. Let's just go with this. Fuck it. And now I just have to solve this issue, which um should be item key, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's see if and uh, now I have to obviously change this as well. Let's, let's rename this item sticked select key. Okay, good. And now we go through the item stick, select many, value, sing up, closing bracket. For me, no way, we do this differently. Never mind, we're doing this differently. Our actions is item sticked, select many value. There we go, this doesn't work because what is D now? And action type argument for as chill as equal children cannot be inferred from the usage. What? Why well, can't it not be inferred from the usage? Oh, because actions is actually, yeah, wait, we have to. Value is the big dictionary. We need to do it this way. There we go. This looks a little weird now, but basically I'm unwrapping this dictionary down here, this dictionary of dictionary of list. So if I activate live unit testing now, we should be back to good. I hope.
very nice. What I don't like is the to list call here because I'm relying on them being the same every time. Oh wait, no, I'm not. No, I'm actually not, never mind. Be fine. Do I have to make it a, to li a list though? Can I not just do this? No, then the, okay, the type changes. Okay, let's reactivate the music. A little quieter though. Songs have a little bit, are a little bit different in volume. Or varying volume, which is a little annoying, to be honest. But besides that, I like what I heard, heard so far. It's a, it's a good mix. And the, th the cool thing about that service is, Pretzel, by the way, for the late joiners, um, is that I can go for the for the premium version, and it's not actually that expensive. It's like five bucks a month, I think, if I remember correctly. So, I, this is not, not totally ridiculous. Like, five bucks a month is, would be okay. Not like other services that take like 13 or 17 bucks. Like that's a lot. But five bucks a month, that's actually affordable and reasonable. That's good. This is not rock though. This is metal. This is very much metal. Do they have a metal playlist as well? They have all tracks. They have rock, chill, happy, mixed... Ambient, holiday, epic, hip hop, chip tune, synthwave, pop, EDM, hype, and upbeat. No, they don't have metal, so all the metal will be in rock. I want to check out upbeat real quick. See what they think upbeat is. No, not digging it. Oh uh, no, this is all, all very electro. Not my cup of tea. Okay, cool. So, what did I actually do now? I changed how I generated the test so I can make the test more complex. So, I should probably commit that really quick. Um, extend it or changed. Uh, create fakes method to return dictionaries. And now we're gonna extend the test by testing for the actions, for every action that has all dependencies returning true being called or being activated. I right know, by the way. Fine. Um, so... I'm just gonna do it with an if here. If... And it broke again. Fucking live unit testing. Why is it dying all the time? If action... No, no, no. I can't do it this way. Because I need the combination of actions and things. So, um, item staked, select many, probably. Yeah, select many. I value where. A dot. So value is a list of dependencies. Yeah, value all, not all. Solve. All of them resolve to true. We can for each do that. So our Actions or 
Ready, actions. Actions with without failing dependencies. For each of our action in actions without failing dependencies. A call call has been has to be made. Action dot actually no I can it, again just select this down to key. Now we actually have an action here. Action. Yeah. Activate. Action. Oh, I need a factory, obviously. Uh, now, with any arguments, must have happened exactly once. Okay, so now life tune testing should fail because the factory is not actually doing that yet. Oh, it's not failing. What? It's not executing this though. So I guess we have. Huh? Why is it not executing this code? What? Is the code actually building? Uh, Fisher asked if I still play Pirate Outlaws, which is a mobile game he recommended. Mm. Kind of. It's kind of on a back burner right now because I found a few other games I play right now uh, when I'm on the toilet. But yeah, I'm still interested in it. Um, for some reason, it's not executing this. Why? Why is it not executing this? All tests finished. Something okay. I'm, something is wrong here. Oh, maybe this is empty. Oh yeah, this is empty. Because yeah, this is empty. Um, interesting. Um, this is empty because um, uh, determine the dependencies all de return fall uh, false right now. So there is no action that should be activated right now. So we have to now change the dependencies. Um, somehow, by creating a more complex fake object here. So, probably gonna make another helper method. Which takes a bool and then just sets this up in a way. So, uh, dependency is fake dependency. Dependency. And then a call to that dependency. Resolve returns resolves turn dependency. And now I can just call it here. True. 
of unit testing died again, right? And now left unit testing should, however, break the test, hopefully. There we go. Finally, it's doing what I expected to do. <laughs> Okay, now I have to do this a little bit differently, though. So... Um, I mean, we can keep this for for a simple start, for a simple test. So this is just all, all, um, all actions, all, all dependencies resolve. We we'll probably change this again. Execute. Generate next steps. Step. Um, execute. Without failing dependencies. So this is a test now, and we can write other tests afterwards. So now we have to take the factory, and now we actually implement it. <laughs> Writing the test takes more time than implementing it. <laughs> this is so. But I think it's still good to do it that way. It makes you think about how how it should work, and um, it makes it easier to change things later on. Because if the if the tests fail, then you instantly know you've fucked it up. I like that sound. Shit, what is this? Alpha Squad, the soundtrack? Steam Age, Alpha Squad? Sewer? No, Steam Age is Steam Age, not Steam Age. Well, yeah, it's Stem Age. Stem Age? I don't know. Alpha Squad soundtrack. I guess Alpha Squad is a is a, is a game or something? I have to check. Or a movie, maybe? Alpha Squad. I mean, that's a bad name. That's that one. What's this? The soundtrack to what? This is a game. No, it's it's. A... I don't know. Is it a movie? I don't know. I guess it's a movie, maybe. Yeah, not this one. I don't know. What is this? It's a soundtrack to what? So, Alpha Squad was delivered to throwback to the top-down arcade style shooters from the 80s and 90s. Is this just... I'm so confused. I think it's a game. I can't find the game. God, this looks good. There we go, found it. Trying divide. I guess it's not out yet. Ah, it's an Xbox Live Indie game. It's an Xbox game? Either it's not out yet or it's 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 got removed or I don't know. It seems old. 2010, it's definitely not in the not out yet category, so it's probably either never got released or I don't know. <laughs> that song is a little weird. What is this? Oh, it's Miracle of Sound again. What do you say? 
Okay, um, anyway, now we have to resolve, or we have to check all the dependencies for all the actions, so... Um... Wait, what was my approach? I go through all... What was my approach here? I go through... I go through all the de 10 dependencies... I mean, I basically have to keep in mind which action has which dependency, right? So... Uh, we do it differently. To dictionary... Action, action. And the value is going to be the dependencies. Now we have a dictionary from action to dependencies. So, and now we can go through all the actions for E or uh, actions. Where? Dependencies for that action. Oh, wait. All. All resolve successfully. And now I can call oops and call activate on those. Did I got the for each syntax wrong? No, I'm missing a semicolon here. Missing a bracket. Ah, uh, test failed. God damn it. What's the error message? Um, make it easy through an exception. Assert, assert failed, assertion failed for the following call. Generate actions. Expect to find it once exactly, but find it twice among the calls. Why are we generating actions twice? Because we're missing two list calls here. There we go. Cool. Okay. So, so good so far. Um, resolve will definitely need a parameter later on because. Um, the dependencies need the list of dependencies to actually resolve themselves. Or maybe write a class that takes the dependencies and resolves them or something. I don't know. Um, maybe make resolve a property later on or something. But we're going to start out simple and then ramp it up later. And um, also I have to obviously change this. Let's actually write this correctly. Or
let's do this so that the activation this should work oh it's no press the wrong button to get the type correct there we go so um now that the factory is actually being manipulated by all the actions um so we change it save it as the new one and give it to the next one Um, I have to test that this actually happens, though. So again, I think I'm gonna take this out. I actually can't properly... How can I properly test that? Because I don't know in which order they're gonna be called. Because the order probably doesn't matter, so I'm not sure how to test that. I can't just test that, test that all of them. I mean, I can't... In theory, I could write a test that checks if the things they. Yeah, I probably could. Could write a test for that. Not sure if it's worthwhile though. I think writing a test for that is. Like, you could write a test where it takes all the actions, uh, all the actions that have been activated, and uh, takes the parameters and the return values they got and took, and then check that all of them have like well, every every parameter has been a return value of one of them and the other way around and whatnot um which seems unnecessary to test really as long as i don't need a specific order if we need a, a specific order we can still do it then but we have to change this though Yeah, because if we don't, we just ignore all the changes. Okay, so this this might actually I know I said this before, but this might actually be almost the final implementation of this method. Um, this is probably going to get a little bit more complex. Um, But besides that, this might be it. This is the basics of what has to happen. As I said, this might have to be rewritten because the dependencies will at least need to take a parameter of like the other dependencies, I assume. Yeah, probably. Or the actions, the action list, maybe? I don't know. I have to, probably both. Um, I probably need, like, a dependency resolver or something. We will see. Um, I'm not gonna bother with that right now, though. So I'm gonna say I uh, edit, I action, activate, and wait, sure. It's being called if all dependencies are resolved. I should also write tests for actually checking the dependencies a little bit more precisely. Because right now they're, the test all, only generates dependencies that are returning true. So I'm not actually checking this properly here. That's the fun part about or the fun thing about code coverage again, right? People say, "Oh, code coverage is important." Uh, well, yeah, code coverage doesn't say much though. Like a lack of code coverage, sure, isn't is a red flag, but um, like just there are green arrows here. Like there are green arrows here. There are green arrows here. Oh, rather, there are green arrows here, and there are green arrows. What's the other thing? Well, there are green arrows here, and this is not actually properly being checked yet. I could I could remove like lines of code from from this as well, and it it would still all be green. Because there's code coverage, but it, it, it doesn't this doesn't like, um, it doesn't mean that the tests are actually useful. <laughs> I can I can write tests that go through all the all the code paths, but always just return true or assert to true, assert successfully I should say. Um, so yeah. Code coverage on its own doesn't say much, but obviously a lack of code coverage is a red flag that you're not testing enough, so. 
I guess there's some there's some meaning to it, some some usefulness. Okay, we're getting there. So I, I kind of got this. Not 1% yet, but good enough. Um, I can write a few more tests if I want to. Not sure. Um, if I should. We'll see. Uh, I could write a few more tests um, and then I should start implementing a few basics. Um, like I don't actually need any dependencies yet, but I need a basic action that does something so I can implement like a conveyor. Um, that would just, I would just like the, 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 the action needs to generate dependencies method though. Um, but I'm just gonna write it in a way that it depends, uh, that it returns no dependencies. So I don't need a dependency yet. So the first implementation will just have like a conveyor that will actually, that will always trigger. That will, it will not be blocked ever. Um, but yeah, we need more complex stuff like that later, obviously. But for the moment, that's going to be enough. So I think we're getting close to being done with the absolute necessary groundwork. I need a basic action, which will be, a, yeah, a little bit interesting. Um, maybe a few more tests. Well, eh, maybe not. Actually, we'll see. Could write more tests for this, but... I don't really want to. Like, it took way too much time. Like, if I would have just wrote this down, it would have been done already. I'd spend so many hours now on writing stupid tests. I don't know. I know why I usually am lazy. I, like, I get the feeling now, or I, again, I learn why I usually am lazy with tests. Because it takes so much time to write them. And yeah, it's useful at some point, but it, also, it takes so much time. I could be so much further if I would not have gone with all the tests. Like, this, it, it has taken me so long to write them. Especially, like, not even the tests themselves, mostly, like, the creating of the mocking objects and whatnot. I mean, I could go the completely functional way and just not have any instances of anything ever. Uh, that would be easier, I guess, to test then. Well, not really. I would have still have to provide the, the the basic data structures in a way like instead of having the action generate dependencies I could have just have an action with a list of dependencies or something along those lines and I would also would be like I would have to provide that as well so I don't know um. actually that's not the functional way the functional way of doing it would be to, I don't know. I don't get functional programming really. I'm always trying to understand it, but I'm somewhat failing. How would I do it if I would do it a functional way? Or what? I mean, it kinda is the functional way I'm doing it right now because I'm working with immutable objects. No, that's not quite true, I guess. How would I do... I don't know. This is very functional though. But not if it is part of a... Class, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I think functional is weird. I never managed to... And I don't see how you do it in a more complex environment. I just don't see it, but... Maybe someone has to show me who is actually good at it. <laughs> I I fail to see how you would implement something more complex in a pure functional way. It is very heavy again. What is this? FaceTime and Justin Nava. What's the song? 45 seconds? 45s? 45s, I guess. Loki Savage. It's pretty... Pretty heavy. Like, I like my metal, but... Shouldn't be that hard. Ugh.
<laughs> okay. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah, let's wrap this up. So, um... Made not as much progress as I hoped, because I took way too long to write those stupid tests today. Which is unfortunate. But we're getting there. I don't know. Should I just ditch writing tests like this? I don't really want to. But I also want to. <laughs> it's rough. Like, it takes so much time. I could be so much faster. But that's short term. I don't know. It might be very beneficial to have them in the long term. Probably. And if I'm not doing... Wow. This song. This song. Sorry. But that's not my taste. Um, so yeah, I don't know. If I don't write them now, I'm probably gonna never, uh, probably never gonna write them. And to be honest, it's probably gonna be beneficial in the long run to have them. So get it out of the way, I guess. And I mean, I think I said that already. But here's the thing: a lot of times you write tests. Well, at least for me, that's true. A lot of times I write tests and then I implement them code, and it just works. And I'm like, why did I even? Why, why did I even write the tests in the first place? Um, sure, if I want to change the code later on, the test will be useful, but in a lot of cases, that's not actually that beneficial um, because you have to change the test anyway and blah, blah, blah. Um, but then there are those instances where you write the test and then you write the code and then you realize, wait, that's not actually working the way I wanted it to do. Like there was a conceptual error or or maybe a com implementation error um, or both and um, you either find the implementation error which is good because you prevented a bug which you would have to had to have debug later on which can be costly and in, um, costly in terms of time and time um, time intensive um, taking a lot of time um, or you catch a conceptual error which is very good if you catch it early on because if you don't catch it early on and you realize later oh fuck I, I misconceptualized this or I like I is that the correct word like I, I wrote like I designed this incorrectly a design error I should say um, I designed this incorrectly or suboptimal um, the sooner you realize that the easier it is to change and um, if you realize that way too late or very very late then it's going to be very very hard to fix usually um, and with hard I mean a lot of effort so, um, sure, a lot of times the tests seem unnecessary, but it's hard to get a good, like, get an objective feeling for it because you don't know how many times you would miss something important if you don't write it with the test. So, uh, I guess it's still worth it to go with the tests. Um... So, yeah. They also already found me a few optimization quirks, funnily enough. Like, I just added the two lists here, right? Because I realized um, this method is being called twice, which is silly, obviously. It's probably not gonna, would probably not gonna be very expensive, like not a big performance hit later on if I if it would be called twice but it's still probably a little bit more performant or a little bit faster to call to list here and then not call it again um, so yeah it's it's good that I found it it's easy to fix and um, probably not gonna be a performance hog later on but you never know and those things are hard to find if you don't find them early so Hmm. I don't know. It's probably worth it, but it feels it doesn't feel like it is, but it probably is. Like subjectively, it feels like it isn't, but objectively, it probably is worth it to to do it um, with tests and whatnot. I don't know. 
hard to say, really. But there's a reason why there is a big community in the test driven design department. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So let's wrap this up. Um, uh, what, what what day do we have? Sunday. Uh, I might be streaming tomorrow. I don't know. Probably streaming a few times this this week, but don't want to make any promises, really. Not Tuesday, that's pretty certain. But besides that, we're probably going to continue working on this. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching, have fun, and see you next time.